when, um, in the 1960s and 1970s, when baseball was, players were fighting for free agency, Kurt Flood basically lost his career for this reason. Other players fought. Marvin Miller, the union head, fought. People said, owners said, fans said, this will destroy baseball. This will be the worst thing that ever happens to baseball if players get free agency and they can go from one team to another and they can, they, can, they can argue for their own money, for their own paycheck. It was the best thing that ever happened to baseball. Baseball is much more prosperous today. Uh, it's a much better sport than it was uh, back then. So the, I, he has, they have no way of knowing that people will be turned off I really have no way of knowing it. I think they'd be fine with it in about five minutes. But the fact of the matter is you won't know until you do it. You just okay. don't know. All right, fair, fair enough. We don't know the future, but we're having a debate, so you got to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it, it, no, it's, a, it's a fair enough point, but I want to hear how you would argue against it. Take it, Lynn. Well, well look, it, it comes down to the fact that, one, you're talking about professionals, and people have one concept of what professionals are about. They have another concept of what college athletes and athletics is all about. Now, you know, I will also concede that the concept of amateurism, the classic concept, is an anachronism. You know, we need to change. It's not professional, but it's not purely amateur. And that's one of the problems the NCAA has had in being able to redefine that. The Olympics is not amateur, because they're getting paid as well. But it's certainly not professional unless you're playing basketball. Bottom line is, you know, you have the galvanization of communities around college sports because their attitudes are about college sports. But why, know, why would that change if the athletes well, we were paid? Well, 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 I was going to say that, that it comes down to if people understood that these were pros again, well, this is a minor league now. Yeah. How many people are minor <laughs> leagues getting? Right, because minor leagues. The, um, the other thing, again, is balance. What we're certainly, I think, probably all agreeing on is some schools will not be able to pay as much as others in, in the idea of paying athletes. And some might not want to pay them at all. That's okay. Yeah. So, well, well we if I may, three, if I may continue, two. Andy, if I may continue. Sorry. And so, for example, you've got, you guys are SEC fans or Big Ten fans or whatever, and you know there's a league and you feel like it's all pretty much on the some equal footing in some way or other, right? And there's, they're going for bowl games and they're doing whatever they're doing and men's hoops, women's hoops, same thing. Well, say goodbye to that. Say goodbye to that because no, there's no way my alma mater Northwestern is gonna be able to pay what Ohio State pays. Women's hoops, let's go with the idea that you guys are gonna pay women athletes, all women athletes, which is great. I'll be cheering for it uh, when it happens. It ain't happening, but I'll be, I'd love to see it happen. So, okay, so what, who could pay women's basketball? We know Tennessee probably could, UConn. So now you're a high school girl and you play basketball. Well, you probably wanna get paid, right? So maybe there's two or three schools that are gonna pay their female basketball players. So then the rest of them will get, those are the best ones will go there. So say goodbye, folks, to competitive balance forever. It will change everything you've thought about college football, college okay, let, basketball. Let